Well, once again, happy Father's Day, everybody. And I pray that every man, every dad, every person here feels blessed today. Realize that our God is a big God. He loves to do big things. And you may have come for a biscuit. You may have come for something. But we pray that you would leave filled with the power and love of Jesus Christ. And that you would know that we love you. That miracles can happen. Uh, we have uh, William up here. I don't know if you can get the, the camera on him. William is 20 years old today. Happy birthday, buddy. The doctors told William that he wouldn't live past three years old, and today he's 20. So, happy birthday, William. <laughs> he's up front every weekend, up here, up front, worshiping, giving his all to Jesus. Come on, nobody has an excuse not to worship God if William can worship God. We love you, buddy. Happy birthday. Hey, find some people around you, introduce yourself, tell them you're glad that they're here. Well, I do want to welcome all those of you who are a guest with us, and we're so thankful that you joined us. You may be online right now worshiping on the live feed. We're so glad that you've joined us or in the cafe. Can we welcome all those who may be at off-site location? And so many awesome things. Of course, uh, we have the man zone going on outside, if you didn't know that. And after the service, after the closing song, We're going to have free biscuits. You will actually not get a biscuit if you leave early. No, just a joke. Just a joke. <laughs> joke. But, but we're going to have Bojangle biscuits, the cornhole, you know all the stuff, basketball, car show, bike show. I mean, it's just like we're just trying to scream to you guys that God loves you and C3 Church loves you. Your pastor loves you. We want you to feel so mega blessed today that all things are possible with God. Amen. And I have some friends here today. I'm so blessed uh, to have them here on stage as well as after the service we'll be hanging out. I'd love to meet you guys. Can you guys welcome Ronnie Shirley from Lizard Lick? What's up, Bo? Oh, man, you know, <laughs> just hanging in there best I can today. Good to see you, man. So honored that you're here. And, and uh, as we were talking a few weeks ago, just the possibility you coming this weekend and you and Amy being here, and we're just so thankful for your friendship. Tell us what's happening uh, on, the, on the TV show right now and what's happening in your life. Well, you know, we're, we're extremely busy. We're busy in a bubble being a bucket of tar nowadays and, uh, <laughs> you know, just trying to live with a family and, and spend our time trying to do what ministry that, that God has allowed us to do. And then the TV show, of course, the filming all the time. And now we're traveling the nation, and it's just, it's just a wonderful thing that's, that God has created for us. And, man, we're just enjoying the ride. Wow. So, you know, um, Ron, some of you may not know, but Ronnie and Amy, they um, had, had a towing business, uh, a repo towing business, right? That, yep. now, that now has been called Lizard Lick, which is the name of the community, right? That, that that's you're the in. name of the cross. You can go to it, but you can't go through it. <laughs> you can't, it's, just, it's just a spot. That's it. <laughs> and uh, so, so this whole, your business, you're just a business guy doing your deal, and all of a sudden now it turns into a TV show. Can, can you tell us how that happened? You know, it was honestly by the grace of God that that happened when they came to us. You know, uh, business was great and everything was wonderful, and, and we were just growing. We were one of the largest repossession companies in eastern North Carolina, probably one of the biggest on the East Coast, and God just had bigger and brighter plans for us. And so uh, they came to us. We never went to them, and, and they came and made us an offer, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, we were happier in a three-eyed dog in a hubcap factory when they came in. <laughs> Hand us that little contract. We get to be on TV, so it's, it's been a great thing. A three-eyed dog. In, in a, a hubcat hub factory. factory. If you really want to make it good, it's a three-eyed dog in a hubcat factory with steel teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. You can write a book one day with all these. these got, got one coming out this fall. I've got one. I got picked up by a random house, and um, I'm getting ready to give T.D. Jakes a run for his money. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> uh, so, so tell me, what's really important in your life? Tell me, uh, you've got a lot going on. You're in the spotlight. The TV's exploding. I was in Atlanta earlier this week, and there's billboards all over Atlanta with your picture on it. Yours and Amy's picture. I'm like, I know him, man. He's my boy. And so, <laughs> so, so tell us, like, what is it like? You're in the spotlight. It's crazy. You've got all this pressure on you. Tell us what that must be like. You know, it's, it's extremely hard. I mean, it's, it's like harder than nailing a raw egg to a tree, to be honest with you, to try to <laughs> handle it and function it. But, you know, it's, it's great that I have a loving, supporting wife who, who's got a great foundation and base to keep us in line as a family. And then I have a God that I can turn to at all times whenever there's a problem. You know, my, one of my favorite sayings is I don't look at God and say, look how big my problem is. I look at my problem and say, hey, check out how big my God is. That's good. So, you know, that's, that's what keeps us where we are. So tell us, um, what, is, what is it that keeps you grounded? Because you're, you're in an environment that may not necessarily be considered a Christian environment, a lot of challenges, I'm sure, that come along with that. So, and I know many people can relate to that in their own life, in their workplace. They, they live maybe in a place that's kind of discouraging or dark or whatever, not, not necessarily a Christian values. What keeps you grounded? What keeps you focused uh, and, and headed in the right direction amidst all the pressure of life? You know, the, I think, Pastor, the thing that keeps me the most grounded, honestly, is my relationship with Jesus Christ. I think that the fact that, that I have a personal relationship with my Lord and Savior, you know, we spend our whole life wanting to be accepted. We spend our whole life wanting to be loved. We spend our whole life looking out for people who want to hold us, embrace us, make us feel good. And, you know, a lot of times when you depend on man, man falls, and they leave you standing in a ditch, and nobody's there with a hand out. And the greatest thing about Jesus Christ, man, is he cleans the ditches. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, he, he, the fact that I can have that personal relationship that when I have a problem I can go to and when I have a great day I can go to, that personal relationship, the fact that we can build and bond on that. You know, uh, when I was a little boy, my dad told me that any man could be a dad, but to be a father, you've got to be able to hold the weight of the world on your shoulders and have hands tender enough to men hearts, and that's what Jesus does. That's awesome. Awesome. I think you've got some sermons inside of you, don't you? <laughs> Hey, um, we just want you to know, Martha and I love you guys, and we are praying for you. We know that God has opened this door for a reason. It's not a coincidence. And we, we pray that, that you would be a shining light uh, in, in, the, in the media, in the TV world, and, and throughout the world. Because God's opened a door for you, and we believe that it's, the purpose is to declare his glory and to share the goodness and the love of Jesus around the world. So, C3 Church, how many of you guys will be praying for Ronnie and Amy? Hey, you know you're doing a, you're finishing your sermon day on relation, or doing some of your sermon on relationships and right, real right. men. And I know last night you told me real men knew how to fix toilets. Yeah. Well, I had an epiphany last night. Uh oh. That real men know how to walk. So when you leave this church today and you can't find your silver bluish toilet coil. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> give me a call. <laughs> I was I was picking on him last night in our Saturday night service because I was watching the show Monday night. I had to be honest with you, I hadn't really watched the show until I met you. <laughs> I was, like a banana so hanging I, with a bunch. I, I, it's okay. <laughs> I probably should go watch this show, man. So I watched it Monday night, and like, your your wife wanted you to fix fix the toilet, right? I mean, not just fix it, but I mean, like, just unplug it. Like, I can't fix a toilet, but I can unplug. It. And I, and the man of God, you couldn't even fix it. You couldn't even unplug it. There is no place in the Bible I've seen that says a man got to work on a commode. <laughs> I want you to sit down right over there. Today I'm talking about what a real man is. Amy, make sure that he takes notes. All right? God bless you, buddy. I love Pastor you. Martha, make sure he's got a ride. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Ronnie. All right, well, this time we're going to transition from that craziness into giving God our first fruits and our offering. And so uh, uh, in the seat in front of you is an offering envelope for your convenience. Uh, most of you know we have an online feature as well. You can go to c3church.com slash giving. You can give online if, as well if that's more convenient, credit card or check as well. So uh, as we prepare for the offering, as men of God, uh, let, let's give God first fruits. Let's not let the, uh, the offering come and go and let's not uh, miss an opportunity to lead our family, to lead our homes and to make a difference for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Come on, let's pray. God, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to, to give to you, God. We look at this as not a, as something that we feel obligated to, because, but something that we, we love to do, God. 
We can't wait to give. God, the Bible says that you love a cheerful giver. God, I pray for cheerful givers today, God, not grumpy givers or our selfishness, but God, I pray that you would release the spirit of generosity in us today, God, that we would put you first place in every area of our life, including the finances. So God, we pray that you would bless this offering. God, we pray that lives would be changed here locally as well as globally as we continue to provide real hope for real people in a real world. We love you, Lord. We worship you, God. You are an awesome God. In Jesus' name, and everybody shouted, amen, amen. amen. Hey, check out C3 News.